Hi everyone. So in the previous videos, we've been using HTML to create a basic, really very simple form. No styling, no JavaScript, no server-side language whatsoever. In this video, we're finally going to use some CSS to style our form. As you can see, although it appears to go about and work and everything, it's very simple. It doesn't look nice at all. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the different ways you can insert CSS into a web page very briefly. And then we're going to style only the header, the footer, and the background. The header being this section here, the footer being this section, the background, of course, being the white part of the page. So to get started, let me talk about the different ways you can insert CSS. The first way you can insert it, and the way that is not recommended unless you're doing it programmatically, is what's called inline styling. And the way you do it is you add an attribute to the page called style. And in here, you put your CSS rules. They can, it can go on any element. That being said, you're not supposed to style any elements that are within this head section or the head element itself. You can style the HTML element, but it's recommended to just keep it to the body unless you have to style somewhere else. So let's just, for sake of example, give this a uh, style of a background. And this is called a CSS property. It's the it's what you assign values to in order to style the page. Uh, we'll give it a background of black, and then put a semicolon so we can separate the properties. And then we'll give it a font color, which is simply color, of white. And let's see what it does. Now, as you can see, turn the background black, turn the, t uh, turn the font white. Again, this is not the recommended way to do this. It is very difficult to maintain over the long period of time. It just becomes cumbersome. The second way of inserting CSS into an HTML file is to use what's called an inline style sheet. In a previous episode, I showed you how you could use script tags to insert JavaScript into a page. Very simple. And you can do the same thing with CSS using a style tag. So we're going to do the same thing. Now the way you access the HTML elements from an internal CSS style or an external CSS file is by declaring the actual tag that you want to style. So in this case we want to style the body. So we'll say body, open and closing curly brace. And then in here we'll put the properties we want to use to style the page or more specifically, the body element. So we'll do background, and we'll give it a color of black, we'll give it a font color of white, and stays the same. Let's make sure this is actually working though. We'll change the color to red, and the colors change to red, so we know it's working. This combination of a property and a value is called a declaration. You put declarations into, these, into this block of code, and the entirety of this is called a CSS rule. Okay, now this can be very cumbersome, especially you're going to end up having uh, ult ultimately probably thousands of lines of CSS. The less CSS you use, the better, but it tends to, uh, it's one of the biggest files you, it can be one of the biggest files you have. For example, if you had to scroll all the way up to the top and then all the way down to the bottom again, it just gets old. So we're going to go ahead and separate this and put it into an external CSS file. The way you link to an external CSS file is by using the link tag, giving it, and it's a self-closing tag, the ones that end with a slash or an HTML5, you don't have to put the slash. You give it a relationship attribute or, an, or a rel attribute, stands for relationship, and uh, we'll give it a value of style sheet. What we're saying is we're linking to an external document. This document has this kind of relationship with the HTML page. And so we need to create the file. We'll call it, or I'll call mine styles.css, and then we'll link to that file. Then inside this file, let's go ahead and color the background. We'll give it a color of blue. And then we'll give it a color of purple. 
Oh, this is not going to look good. And it looks horrible. Can barely read it. But we know it's working now. Okay, so now that we have this information, let's go ahead and start styling the header, footer, and background. So I'm going to go ahead and make the background a bluish gray. And to do this, this is called an ex, a hexadecimal color code. Um, you saw me use words before. You can use the name of a color. You can use the hexadecimal code. You can use RGBA or HS. LS, HLSA, but, um, and you'll have to research those on your own if you don't know them. So there's the color. And Visual Studio has a built-in color picker, so I'm going to take advantage of that. If you want to look for a color you like, Google HTML color codes, and you should come up with something. Whoops. Like this. And these have their own pickers you can use. There's this one here. I don't like that color picker. I recommend something like this, where you can actually drag it around and see the results. Okay, so I want a kind of bluish background. I think that'll be good. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, yep. Next, I want to change the font. This is called a shorthand property. You use it to combine several properties into one. For example, I'm going to use um, give the font size 16 pixels in size and use the Arial Sans Serif family to make it look like this. But you could also do the same um, using font family and font size. And there's more than that, but uh, this is what we'll be using for now. Next, we want to get rid of the margin. Set margin to zero. The margin is the space around an element. So if we inspect it before we refresh, we see that um, body actually has space around it. It's that orange color. So when we refresh, we got rid of it, so there's no more spacing. But then, unfortunately, it pushes it against the page. So now we want to wrap everything into what's called a wrapper div. We'll use the div tag for this because the div really has no semantic value. It's just used to separate content and style it in a specific way. And we'll put everything inside of this. And we'll do this for both the main and the footer also. And if you haven't noticed, I did get rid of these horizontal rule tags. We don't need to use them anymore since we're going to be styling things with CSS. There will be cases where you still want to use them, but I would argue use them sparingly. You can do a lot of what you want with CSS. Okay, so we put them in wrapper. Now we want to create a new rule called wrapper. We want to give this a width of 800 pixels. And then we want to give it a margin. And we're going to say, I want the margin top and bottom to be zero pixels, meaning no space on the top and bottom of the element. But then I want the right and left margin, the space on the left and the right of the element, I want that to automatically adjust itself. Let's see what this looks like when we try it out. And as you can see, it centers the content on the page. This is the header element. This is the wrapper. You can see it was centered now. Um, there's another way you can do this with uh, with flex, or sorry, display flex. And the display says sh it's how basically you want the content or the element to display. You could give it a display of none, and it won't show up. But we'll give it a display of flex. And then we have to set the flex direction to column because the default is row. And we don't want everything. Yeah, well, I'll just show you. If we set it to row, looks like that, lines up like that, which can be useful, but we want it to be column. Okay. Well, we actually don't want to do that. That's getting too specific, I think. We'll just leave it like that. Everything's centered. Next, what we want to do is uh, style the header. 
So we'll give the, oh, I didn't explain this part. So this is the class attribute. The class attribute is, it allows you to give names to elements and then use those names to style it. And that's its main purpose. Contrary to the ID attribute, which uniquely identifies an element, more than one element can share the same class on a single page, which is what allows us to reuse wrapper on all these different div elements. And you use this when you want to uh, share styles between elements. So we're going to give the header a class attribute and we're just, uh, we'll just call it header. And the reason is because we have uh, header tags down here, but they're part of the article and that's perfectly fine. So we want to differentiate this header from all the other headers. So we'll say header and we want, I want to give it a white background. You can play around with the colors and style it however you want. And I do encourage you to learn the hexadecimal system. It's very useful. What is this doing? Okay. So sometimes what happens is when you're using margin, um, let me show that real quick. It will, uh, it won't, even though the title is inside of the wrapper, well, the outside, the parent container and the outside container react really weirdly. So you can see that the title or the heading is pushing down the header tag, but it's also pushing down the body element as well. We don't want that. One way we can get rid of it is by putting display flex and flex direction column. And as you can see, it fixes it. And we were gonna do this anyway, so it's okay. Let's go ahead and uh, add a style to the HTML attribute while we're at, or to the HTML element while we're at it. We're gonna give it a minimum height of the view height. And the view height is exactly what it sounds like. It is the height of the device that is currently viewing the web page. And we're gonna give this a display of flex and give it a flex direction of column just for fun. Okay, and nothing appears to have changed. Now that we've got the header with the white background, let's go ahead and style the nav bar. So we're gonna give the nav bar a class and we're just gonna call it nav bar. And let's go ahead and add some comments. Comments are used to like add notes to code without actually messing up the code itself. I'm gonna call this the general section. And we're gonna call this the uh, header section and put the header there. And then we're gonna have the nav bar section, main content footer section, but those will come later. So nav bar. Next, we're gonna give the nav bar a background, or I am at least, of uh, blue. See if I can find a blue I like. And we're gonna give it a color white. And the reason it didn't change color, well, technically it did. So if we take a look here and put tacos there, directly inside the nav element, we see the text is white. The problem is that the browser has its own style sheet and it's overriding the color and it's making the links look purple because they've already been visited before. So we want to change only the links within the nav bar. So we're gonna go nav bar and then select the inner elements by putting a space and then putting the name of the element or class that we want to affect. So we'll say nav bar color white. Now it's white and I want to get rid of those uh, text or those underlines. So we'll use text decoration, none. And now you can see the underlines are gone. Uh, next, I want to put a padding around this. Margin is margin affects the space surrounding an element while padding affects the space inside of the element. So we'll give it a padding of one rim. What this stands, uh, actually, I don't know what it stands for. I know the R stands for root, but essentially we're saying we want to use the default font size of the entire document. We set the default font size to 16 pixels. So what this is saying, I want the padding to be 16 pixels all around. By the way, padding and margin are shorthand for padding top space. 
right space, bottom space, left space. No, I don't know why they did it this way. Uh, I guess it makes sense. I, I Actually, I think left should be first. Top, left, bottom, right, kind of like that. And it doesn't, it kind of works. The reason it doesn't fully is because the links themselves are in line. And when an element is in line, uh, the padding doesn't actually, and I believe margin also, do not affect the space on the top and the bottom, only on the left and the right. Which makes sense because it's in line. So to get around this, we want to select the navbar wrapper. Uh, but first, we want to set the display to not be in line. We want it to be block. That way it will take up all the space. And if we look at it before we mess with the wrapper, we see it puts everything on the next line. We could do something called inline block. The reason I don't like this is because um, it puts a space between the two elements. So you see there's a space there. And if we come to this one, give it a background of red. You can see this blue space in between them. And we don't want that. So we'll come here to wrapper, put this back to block, and we'll give the wrapper a display of flex. And that should be good. And as you can see, the space is taken away. And as you can see, the space is now gone in between them. But I want people to notice if it's if the link's being hovered over. So we're going to use another rule called... Um, it's actually a CSS selector called hover. This means that whenever someone hovers over the anchor tag, we want to style it with whatever's in here. So I'm going to give it a background of black, but I want the black to be transparent. I don't actually want it to be black. I want it to be a darker blue. But if I ever change it to a different color like orange, I don't want to have to go back and change this. So I'm going to make black transparent to uh, artificially darken the color with an overlay. So we'll make this uh, transparent at 0.25 because it can only go from 0 to 1. So if we hover over it, we see that we get this color now. But I don't like it appearing out of nowhere like that. So let's add a transition property. And this will say I want to transition all of the colors within one second using a linear function. Uh, there's a reason why I'm not putting it on hover and the reason is because of this. It cuts out once you leave off hovering over the element. So you see it hovers in, but once you go off of it, immediately cuts out. So if we put it on this one, that's the base style for the anchor tag and not the hover, now it not only transitions in, but it transitions out. And let's go ahead and shorten that to, let's see, 0.25, so a quarter of a second. Eh, still too slow. Let's try 0.15 seconds. Okay, that's good enough. Now we got the header and the navbar styled. Let's finally go ahead and style the footer. So let's come back down here and call that footer. Okay, now that we have that, oh, I didn't even style anything. We'll give this footer a background of uh, 444. Four, four. That'll work. Color it white. Take a look. Okay, but now we have a new problem. The footer's not at the bottom, so this kind of looks tacky. How can we fix this? Well, we already made the body uh, display have a display of flex, and we gave the HTML a min height of 100% of the dis of the um, device's screen height. So next we're going to give body a height of 100% or actually a min height of 100%. Okay, next 
we're going to put a new property on this called flex. We're going to say, I want the relative to all the other content inside the HTML element, which there is none except for the head, which doesn't matter. I want this to grow and not shrink automatically. So basically we're saying, I want this to take up whatever space there is. So have we done that? Yes, body is now taking up the rest of the HTML space. But alas, the footer is not. But thankfully, the body is also display like the HTML. Sorry, the body is also flex display just like the HTML is. So we can come down here to the, uh, actually we have to put a class on the main content. And we'll call it <laughs> main content. Typically when with, with class names, when you have multiple words, you put a dash in between them. And then with IDs, you would actually use camel case, which, which looks like that. So we have main content now. And we'll say relative to all the other elements, the header, the nav, and the footer, I want this element using the flex property to take up the remaining space, not shrink, and do this automatically. And when we do this, the footer gets pushed to the bottom. So that's it for now. Um, I've already styled all the other pages, kind of. But uh, you can uh, see that even though it gets pushed to the bottom down here, it doesn't actually, that, that space gets taken up with all the other content that's in it so that you don't have this huge gap like when you're on the uh, home page. So yeah, that's really all we wanted to do in this video and be, that's, I'm trying to keep the videos as short, short as possible. Um, if you like them, please subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to get my Subscribestar account verified. It's taken a while. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, critique, give me feedback. I'd like to improve these any way possible. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.